Hello, since the year 2015 has recently come to an end, I decided to do a top 11 list of my top 11 favorite films to come out in 2015. So here's the list, and I hope you enjoy. Number 11 on my list is technically a film that came out in 2014, but it got like a limited release in 2014. It didn't get like a major release until January of 2015, so I'm counting this as a 2015 movie. But number 11 on my list is Inherent Vice, which is a comedy slash crime drama film directed by Paul Thomas Anderson. Now, this was a very very polarizing film for a lot of people. Some people liked it, and some people really didn't. I personally enjoyed this movie a lot, and one of the things I enjoyed so much about this movie was the fact that it really did play with tone a lot in an almost uneven way, because there are parts of this movie that are funny as hell, but then there are parts of this movie that are actually quite dramatic, and there are also parts of this movie that are also really suspenseful, actually, and it played with tone in a very almost uneven way, but that's something I actually really enjoyed about the movie. And the movie also has a great cast as well, like Joaquin Phoenix, Reese Witherspoon, Benicio Del Toro, Josh Brolin, Eric Roberts, Owen Wilson, and to give away a bit of a, to give a little hint of another movie that's going to show up on this list later on in this video, this is not the only movie that I put on this list to have both Benicio Del Toro and Josh Brolin in it, so. So that might give away a bit of a spoiler of another film that's going to show up later on on this list. Number 10 on my list is Krumpus, and oh my god, this film was freaking brilliant. Now, Krumpus is a Christmas-themed horror comedy film about a little boy named Max who still believes in the Christmas spirit, but his family are, like, just miserable people, and because of how miserable his family is, he loses faith in the Christmas spirit, and this this unfortunately invokes the wrath of a demon called Krumpus, which has now come to take his family to hell. This is a really, really fun movie. Now, the movie has been compared to Gremlins, but honestly, this movie reminded me a lot of the old Full Moon movie, Demotic Toys, and if you've seen this movie, and if you've seen Demotic Toys, you might be able to tell why this film reminded me so much of Demotic Toys, but Krumpus is a really, really fun movie. Like, I freaking enjoyed the hell out of this film film. Number nine on my list is Black Mass, which is the true story of notorious gangster Whitey Bulger, who in this movie is played by Johnny Depp. And this was a really, really good movie. And the whole film is about how this guy has been able to get away with all his crimes for all those years because his brother was actually a politician and his best friend was an FBI agent. And even though the film is mostly about Whitey Bulger, I would argue that the main character of the film really is Joel Edgerton's character in the film, the FBI agent because the film is really about that character's fall from grace because of his association with Whitey Bulger. But uh, in this movie, Johnny Depp gives a genuinely horrifying performance as a character who is based on a real guy. And I hate to say it, Johnny Depp in recent years has kind of become a caricature of himself, but it was really refreshing to see Johnny Depp playing this kind of role.
Number eight on my list is another film based on a true story, and that is Spotlight, and this was such an excellent movie. And this film will seriously get under your skin and might actually make you really angry. Now, the film is about a group of journalists who expose the Catholic Church for all the sex abuse scandals, and it's an excellent film. And in the film, you see all this getting under some of these journalists' skin because some of them are actually Catholics, or at least lax Catholics, and they see these men who are supposed to be men of God doing these despicable things, and they see how the church is just sweeping it under the rug. It's a film that will definitely make you angry and will definitely get under your skin, but it is an excellent film. So number eight, on my list is Spotlight. Number seven on my list is The Hateful Eight, which is the new film from Quentin Tarantino, and this film was freaking excellent. The film was funny as hell, it was gory as hell, and it was really, really fucked up. Now, the film is a western, and I'm not the biggest fan of westerns, like, I have nothing against them, it's just not really a genre that I specifically seek out, but this was a really, really good one, though. And I actually got a chance to see this movie before it was released, like, nationwide. I saw the Roadshow edition, which only got a limited release, and when I was at the theater, I was given this booklet on the movie. Now, the Roadshow edition is over three hours long, and it comes with an overture in the beginning and an intermission in the middle. Now, the version that's out now is only two hours and 45 minutes, so I don't know if the version that's out now comes with the overture or the intermission or not. Now, I don't know if I'm the only one who noticed this or not, but I noticed a lot of parallels between The Hateful Eight and John Carpenter's The Thing, because at the end of the movie, they use some of the same music from The Thing, and some of the visuals in the movie reminded me a lot of some of the visuals in John Carpenter's The Thing, so I noticed some parallels between the two movies, like, it would not surprise me at all if, like, Tarantino was watching the thing when he wrote the screenplay for this. Number six on my list is Straight Out of Compton, which is the true story of the rap group N.W.A. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of rap music. Like, I like N.W.A., and I like some rap music, but it's not really my go-to music. But I do have a deep respect for rap music, and honestly, this movie just gave me even more of a respect for the genre, and even more of a respect for N.W.A. And in the film, you see these guys rise to fame, and you see the fame get to some of their heads, and the film is also very much a commentary on police corruption, because these guys actually witnessed and were the victims of police corruption. That was what the song Fuck the Police, which is one of their most famous songs, is all about. And even though this film is set in the late 80s and early 90s, the film unfortunately, is still relevant today. Like, if you watch the news, you see that police corruption still is rampant even today. Number five on my list is Ex Machida. Now, this is a very cerebral science fiction film. This is a film that really does make you think about mankind's place in the universe and where mankind is heading. And ultimately, it's a morality tale about how man should not try to play God. In that sense, it's very similar to Mary Shelley's Frank 
Frankenstein. Now, the plot of the movie is it follows this young man who ends up spending a couple of days at the home of this very well-known scientist, and it turns out that this scientist has actually created artificial intelligence. He has created a female cyborg, and the main character of the movie starts to actually fall in love with this cyborg. It's a great movie, and it's a brilliant study on male vulnerability. But yeah, I definitely recommend Ex Machida, and that's number five on my list. Number four on my list is The Gift, which was actually written and directed by Joel Edgerton, who also plays the main villain of the movie. Now, this was a movie that I wanted to see when I saw the trailers for it, but when I actually saw this movie, my jaw was in my freaking lap at how good this movie actually was. Like, this is an excellent psychological thriller, and Really, this film is just so freaking good. And part of what makes this film so good really is Joel Edgerton's performance, because his character in this movie, Gordo, he's a character who is creepy, but there's nothing over the top about his performance at all. It's all done very subtly. Like, he's like a creepy guy that you would know in real life, and he doesn't come off as being bad in the beginning. Like, from the beginning, you could tell there's something kind of off about this character, but he doesn't come off as a bad guy at first, but as the movie goes on, you realize, yeah, this is a bad guy, but you realize that there's actually a reason he's as bad as he actually is. Like, something was done to him in the past to make him this fucked up, and really the film's ultimately kind of a revenge thriller in a way, and he's getting revenge on Jason Bateman's character in the movie, and Jason Bateman in this movie is such a scumbag. Like, I don't want to give anything else away about this film, but this is such a good movie, and Rebecca Hall also gives a great performance in this film as well. The Gift is an excellent movie, and it's number four on my list. Number three on my list is Sincario. This was a freaking great movie. Now, this is a film like Spotlight. It's a film that really did get under my skin. Like, this is a very haunting and sinister film. And a really, like, it's a film that really will make you feel dirty watching it. But it's an excellent movie, though. Now, the plot of Sincario is it follows this FBI agent named Kate, played by Emily Blunt, who is assigned to this special task force who are trying to take out the leader of this Mexican drug cartel, and she eventually finds out that the men she's working with are very corrupt, and they're doing a lot of downright illegal things in order to achieve this goal, in order to take out this drug lord. And really the films about the drug wars going on in Mexico, and really how futile the drug war really is. Now the trailers for this movie kind of promoted Benicio Del Toro's character as the villain, which he is kind of the villain, and he does do some evil shit in this movie, especially towards the end, but there's a particular revelation about his character where you kind of see where he's coming from. But yeah, Sincario is a great movie with some great performances from Benicio Del Toro and Emily Blunt and Josh Brolin. Excellent movie. If you haven't seen this movie, you owe it to yourself to check this movie out.
Number two on my list is a film that almost made it to number one, but there was another film that came out in 2015 that I did like a little bit more than this, but this was still a brilliant movie. And number two on my list is It Follows. Now, this and The Babadook, which came out in 2014, I would argue are the two best horror films to come out in the last five or six years at least in my opinion. Now, the plot of It Follows is it follows this young girl who meets this guy and eventually the two of them have sex and it turns out that this guy had a curse on him where he was being followed by some kind of a demon and now that he has had sex with her, he has passed the curse onto her. So now she's being followed by this demon that will kill her unless she passes the curse onto somebody else. Pretty much, it's a sexually transmitted curse, or as I like to call it, a demotic STD. But yeah, It Follows is an absolutely brilliant movie, and it has really good acting in it, and it actually has characters that you really do give a shit about. It's an excellent film, and the movie reminded me a lot of a movie that would have came out in the 1980s. Like, it's shot like a film that would have came out then, and it actually reminded me of a film that... John Carpenter or Wes Craven would have done back in the 1980s, and the soundtrack for this movie is absolutely beautiful. Like, it's one of the best soundtracks in any movie of any genre, in my opinion. Like, the film has a great soundtrack, it has great acting, great characters, a really interesting and original premise. Yeah, It Follows is a great movie. If you haven't seen this movie yet, definitely, definitely check this movie out. And my number one favorite film of the year, the film that actually beat It Follows, is Mad Max Fury Road, which is the fourth film in the Mad Max franchise and serves as both a sequel and a reboot to the series. Now, Mad Max Fury Road, in my opinion, is one of the best action movies to come out in years. Like, I actually saw this movie three times in the theater. Like, this movie really did just blow me the fuck away. Now, even though this is the fourth film in the Mad Max series, you could easily watch this movie without having to see the older films, because the movie begins with a little prologue in the beginning kind of explaining how the world ended. Like, it doesn't explain it fully, but it gives you an idea on how the world ended. And if you wanted to, you could just look at this as a standalone post-apocalyptic movie. But it is a great movie, though. And it's done in such a way where it can be both looked at as a sequel and a reboot. Because if you wanted to, you could set this in the same continuity as the older films, or you could look at this as a complete reboot, completely set in its own continuity. Either way is fine, really. Now, the film really is one giant-ass action sequence, but there is a lot of deeper meaning to it as well. Like, there is a legitimate story being told in this movie, but in this film, there is a lot of deeper meaning. Like, there's definitely kind of a pro-feminist message in the film, but there's also kind of a commentary on religion in the film and on hero worship, and there's kind of an environmental message in the film as well, but it's nothing that's like shoved in your face or anything, but in the film, you realize that water is in very short supply, and unfortunately, because of climate change, there are a lot of places in the world that are suffering droughts, and it seems like this movie is kind of reflecting on that, but it's nothing that's like shoved in your face or anything. 
whatever social commentary is in the movie is really subtle, and you could just enjoy it as a mindless action film, or you could look at some of the deeper meaning that is in the film. And Tom Hardy really does a great job in this movie as the character of Max, who, of course, was originally played by Mel Gibson in the older Mad Max movies, and Charlize Theron also does a really good job in this movie as well as the character of Furiosa, and once again, it is an excellent movie. If you haven't seen Mad Max Fury Road, definitely check this movie out. Even if you've never seen the older Mad Max movies, check this movie out. This is a great movie. So yeah, that's my list of my top 11 favorite films to come out in 2015. I hope you enjoyed the video, and feel free to comment down in the comments section what your favorite films of the year were, and let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the films I put on this list, and yeah, bye Felicia.